Okay, let's finish up with chapter 14. I had a question for you. Are you type A? Are you type B? Maybe even type T. Let's talk about these types. Type A people, and of course we're generalizing anytime we group people into any kind of group. Type A people are competitive, hard driven, sometimes impatient. Type A people tend to have more health problems because they don't have time to sit down and smell the churros. Time is money. So they go through the fast food. They don't go to doctor's appointments as often as they should. They may even, may even ignore symptoms of a heart attack. They're more likely to get a heart attack because they're burning the candle at both ends, if you've ever heard that expression. Type B are the absolute opposite. We're laid back, less competitive, easygoing. If I got a business, I probably want some type B people welcoming folks to the store. You know how you have those greeters at the front of the store? Welcome, welcome. If I've got a business and I'm selling things, I probably want some type A people going out there and hustling. Those are the folks that usually have their pictures in front of or inside the store as salesperson of the month, right? Here's some images of type A and type B. Now, some of you might start thinking, well, Maybe I'm a little bit of both. Depends on the circumstances. At work, it's very stressful, so I'm more A. And then with my friends, I'm more B. That's okay. Now, let's get to the type T. I'll give you a hint what T stands for. It's that, the word starts with T. Okay, well, it's thousands of possible words, right? Uh, I'll give you another hint. You're the kind of person, when it's announced that a new roller coaster, super fast, super scary, it's just open at the local theme park. You're there the first day, the first car with your hands up, riding on the roller coaster. Yes, thrill seekers. Are you type T? By the way, we've done some uh, research with type T and drug users, and they find that their brain patterns are very similar. Not saying that type T people are dr drug users. I'm just saying that that need for that fix for type T is adrenaline for drug users. It's the drug itself. That fix is there, always trying to one-up it, so to speak. As I mentioned with type A, uh, hostile personalities generally are more prone to depression. When we talk about depression, one of my definitions I remember hearing years ago is depression is anger turned inwards. So you got all this hostility and it doesn't have the right outlets for it. It's not good to have things build up, right? The research shows it's better to be an optimist, right? The glass is half full as opposed to half empty, which leads me to positive psychology. Now, when positive psychology came out around the 1980s, I started reading about this fellow named Martin Seligman. Now, I had heard about Martin Seligman because he did research with uh, learned helplessness. He's done a lot of research on shyness. But when I started reading the components of positive psychology back in the 80s, I started thinking, what the fuck? I've been practicing as a clinician. Uh, I've been practicing positive psychology most of my life, even as a human being. And I thought, man, I should have written down this stuff so I could be one of the founding fathers of positive psychology. Their emphasis, of course, is focusing on the positive attributes of a person, building that component up and living a much more happier life. Seligman found that um, optimists, right around middle age, their health is a lot better than pessimists. Those, their health starts to deteriorate around middle age. So health-wise, it's better to be an optimist. And that's hard because, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening in this world. And I don't mean wear the rose-colored glasses and be a Pollyanna and think that everything's fine when it isn't. But try to find something positive every day. You know, if I go through a drive through and somebody says, how are you doing? I say, I'm alive. And we should all be grateful for that, right? 
It's all about how you approach this world. For example, when you have life events, things happen, right? Like that bumper sticker says, stuff happens, but it's not a direct quote, right? Do you see things as a challenge or a threat? When I say the next exam, are you like, oh no, there's acid in my stomach? Or it's like, bring it, I'll be ready for the next exam. Is your personality style more hostile, depressed, pessimistic, or you're more easygoing, an optimist? Is your personal habits not like mine? You saw in that photograph in the first video, smoker, couch potato, junk food addict, or are you more out there and you're out and about, still getting your exercise, eating well, thinking well? Do you have people you can talk to? We always have people we can talk to. You can contact our health center, psychological services. They offer services to people that you can talk to, right? Uh, sometimes our family and friends are the ones we're having issues with, so we feel like we're lacking. But we always have somebody we can talk to. Okay, so this yellow area kind of leads to illness, and this other area leads to health. And yes, we have a say. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, you can, you can eat right, exercise, and be as positive as you can, and be walking across the street, and a bus can run you over and make you into a human tortilla. That stuff happens. But we have a say as to the quality of our life. The sense of well-being is part of positive psychology, right? And that means our entire environment, the room that we sleep in, the home that we live in, the school we attend, the people we connect with or hang out with. There are so many ways that positivity can affect everything, including our blood pressure, our sugar levels. That's why I always tell my students, if you're trying to kill me, do poorly on the next exam because that raises my sugar levels. I told you that because that could be a murder attempt, right? So the question is coming up what's normal? What's abnormal? What's abnormal, right? Having strong emotions is very, very normal. Feeling things is normal, but so intense that you cannot focus even on this lecture. You've probably crossed that line. Right? What else? A little bit of denial okay but so extreme that you have to constantly take drugs to not deal with things not okay not okay intrusive thoughts normal did you ever break up with somebody and it seems like every freaking song is about your breakup why are you torturing me well it feels that way but so intrusive and i've literally had this happen i've had students after a lecture, say, you know what, Mr. Pedroza, I didn't hear a word you were saying. I said, well, well, do I need to speak up louder or what? No, 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 I was here. But I wasn't here because I have all these thoughts going through my hands. Symptoms, physical symptoms. You know, we talked about this earlier. When you start to start having any of those aches and pains, that's normal. The stress is getting you down, but so much so that you're on a first-name basis with the pharmacist, right? Because you they even have a... Uh, some medication waiting for you and you're not even you know expecting to have medication they figure you're going to be in anyway so here this, we're going to fill your order anyway so you have kind of a choice to be normal you know they say time heals all wounds i i, I don't know if it heals all wounds but it certainly does help with most circumstances or you become that person that's so stressed that other people don't want to be around this anymore because they you know, you've had this happen. Do you ever meet somebody? As soon as that person walks into the room, you get stressed too because they're so stressed. You don't want to be that other person, right? Not at all. So find people around you that are positive, that can lift your spirits. And some of you have those people that make you laugh, that are silly, that really sit and listen. Some people are just really good listeners. You don't have to have them say a whole lot, right? You can even get married. Now, some of you are married. 
but uh, I'm not advising that, right? Because it could be sudden. I don't want you to just go out and the first person you see, I'm marrying you. But marriage has its positivities. And I'll tell you, being married myself, I can tell you from experience that um, having a best friend that you're a partner with, there's nothing like it. If you have an experience, you share it, positive or negative, and vice versa. And find somebody who's a real good cook or can clean the house. Now, my wife is an excellent cook, and I'm the cleaner in the family. Like yin and yang. Yeah. Spirituality helps many people. Higher power, formal religion. It could be just even Mother Nature, for that matter. Just knowing that there's more out there, you know. I took this picture some years ago, and it was at a cemetery. So this person's praying for peace. Right? They, they, hopefully they have peace in the cemetery. Mother Nature is so beautiful. Just walk outside and open your eyes, and you'll see so many beautiful things. So here's some tips what to do. Eat, drink. Take good care of yourself. Everything in moderation, right? We've learned to get stressed out. We can learn to relax. Got a question for you. Of the two genders, which one is more stressed and why? Now, before you start throwing things at the screen in front of you, think about your answer. Because I think that the environment, our communities, our upbringing, our expectations all lead to certain expectations and certain stressors that face males or females. Now, so you say you want to continue being stressed. Let me give you some tips. Never exercise. Gain weight. Take plenty of stimulants. Avoid woo-woo practices like yoga and stuff like that. Get rid of your social support system. Who needs them? Personalize all criticism. Throw out your sense of humor. Male and females alike, be macho. Become a workaholic. Discard good time management skills. Procrastinate. Worry about things you can't control and be, become not only a perfectionist, but set in possibly high standards. You are guaranteed to raise up your stress levels. Of course, I'm being facetious. Okay, let's give you some answers here. I want you to tell me everything you know about gas, Hans Selye's theory on general adaptation syndrome. I want you to tell me everything you know about positive psychology. By the way, I got a chance to meet Martin Seligman. He was signing some books, and he signed a couple of books for me. And I said, where do I pay? And he said, I'm giving these to you. Oh, yeah, I like you, Martin Seligman. And finally, I want you to talk about the issue of stress and gender. What relationship do those two have with each other? And I'm sure you're going to fill up that exam, giving your two cents on research and personal experiences. I appreciate you watching this video, and I hope that your stress level is reduced dramatically. Take care.